Madonna's debut film role, casts her as an abused character, labeled as a and the movie concludes with a purported real satanic ritual, fueling rumors that a certain sacrifice might be a snuff film. This unsettling cinematic relic is worth exploring. It's safe to say that enduring the entirety of a certain sacrifice demands a significant commitment from the audience. Despite its brief runtime of under an hour, the viewing experience feels excruciatingly prolonged. Shot on Super 8, the film exhibits shaky camerawork and blurry visuals, coupled with subpar sound quality. In essence, it serves as a quintessential example of guerrilla filmmaking from the 1980s. However, despite its poor overall quality, a certain sacrifice has one redeeming feature. It marks the debut of Madonna, who would later rise to become a global superstar. This single aspect propelled the film to reasonable sales upon its 1985 release. Subsequently, it earned cult status among Madonna enthusiasts and became a sought-after collector's item, with the option to view it on YouTube. A cover of the elusive tape. The film is labeled the film she tried to ban due to Madonna's attempt to block its distribution, offering $5,000 for its rights, but to no avail. Reports suggest Madonna detested the movie and its final form. However, her reluctance to showcase it may also stem from its candid portrayal of the twisted aspects of the art world and entertainment industry she later fully embraced. Some even speculate that a certain sacrifice might be an actual snuff film featuring a real sacrifice. Undoubtedly, this movie serves as a fitting introduction to the artist who would eventually become the grand priestess of the music industry. Take a closer look at this intriguing piece of Madonna's past. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The film kicks off by introducing the two main characters, who aren't particularly likable. Madonna portrays Bruna, characterized as a very bad girl. Jeremy Pantnosh, co-writer and actor, plays the male lead, a suburban man incompatible with his conservative Christian upbringing. Known as Dashiell on the streets, his name could be a nod to Dashiell Hamlet, the blacklisted author targeted by the House Un-American Activities Committee in 1953 for his Marxist beliefs. This connection underscores the movie's antagonists, portrayed as bigoted and corrupt businessmen. Seeking change, Dashiell ventures from the suburbs to New York City, where he encounters Bruna in an unusual scenario at Washington Square Park. Engaging in a provocative dance under a water fountain, Bruna garners the attention of perplexed onlookers, authentic New Yorkers, not mere extras. As she's dancing, Dashiell shows up and points a at her. Then he aggressively slams her onto the ground and kisses her. As we'll soon see, Bruna has some clear beta kitten tendencies, as she constantly seems in heat, while also constantly getting abused. Following an extended, awkward dance sequence, witnessed by perplexed New Yorkers, the protagonists share a kiss, initiating their unlikely romance. However, their relationship encounters a significant hurdle when Bruna must confront her unconventional polyamorous arrangement, known as her family of lovers, comprising a man, a woman, and a transgender woman. Bruna characterizes their dynamic as a mutual enslavement, highlighting the complexity of their non-traditional bond. Bruna is dressed in bright red, the color of sacrifice, as she stands before her family. When Bruna tells the family to stop being jealous, the three grab her and throw her on the ground. The scene that ensues can only be described as a choreographed <laughs> Bruna's lovers forcibly undress her while a knife is pointed at her face, and a giant <laughs> goes over her head. It appears that a great portion of the movie is dedicated to subjecting Bruna and Madonna to a series of scary or downright trauma-inducing situations. In the following scene, Dashiell sings like a psychopath about a screaming demon lover, while Bruna looks worried and scared. I don't know why this scene exists other than subjecting Madonna to some insanity. Things will soon get even worse for Bruna. Dashiell encounters Raymond Hall, who later becomes the intended sacrificial victim, notably attired in red. 
Hailing from upstate New York, Hall expresses disdain for the city's crime, coupled with a racist tirade. He claims ownership of a hardware store and boasts of his military service in Korea and Vietnam before inquiring about finding a sexual partner, only to be rebuffed by Dashiell's terse response. Get lost. Despite the dismissal, Hall resurfaces at the same diner as Dashiell and Bruna, leading to a disturbing altercation. He follows Bruna into the restroom and violently r***ed her, marking the third instance of abuse within the short film. Curiously, director Stephen Lewicki privately instructed the actor portraying Hall to tear Madonna's blouse during the scene, prompting genuine shock from the artist. After that scene, Bruna cries and agonizes in the diner as a b sticks out of her ripped shirt. Knowing what happened previously, that scene becomes even more upsetting. After this awfulness, Dashiell seeks retribution by abducting Hall and transporting him to a theater, where he becomes the central figure in a macabre satanic ritual sacrifice. Bound and silenced, Hall endures Dashiell's rendition of Raymond Hall Must Die Today, while a coven of female singers mock him in a witch-like manner. The distress on the actor's face appears genuine, accentuated by his rough handling and apparent pleas to the stage crew. Strikingly, speculation surrounding the scene suggests a haunting possibility. According to a Reddit thread, Fiona Barnett, a survivor of satanic ritual abuse, claimed that a certain sacrifice might be a genuine snuff film. Online investigators attempted to trace the actor Charles Kurtz, playing Hall, but found no verifiable information, fueling suspicions of his potential demise during the film's production. Although challenging to substantiate, the unsettling atmosphere surrounding the scene persists, amplified by Dashiell's grisly act of filling a sizable chalice with Hall's blood and smearing it across his own visage, subsequently drenching others in the crimson fluid. Then, as Bruna lies in bed, Dashiell shows up with his cup of blood. Dashiell blesses Bruna with the blood. Then he covers her body with it and they start kissing, with blood on their faces. At the end of the movie, the narrator says that Bruna and Dashiell live happily ever after. He also adds. It's all mixed up. Bad is good, black is white, love is hate. He's got that right. While a certain sacrifice is an objectively awful movie, it is quite interesting from a historical perspective. In less than an hour, the movie manages to put on screen several obsessions of modern pop culture, such as satanic rituals, blood sacrifices, dual slavery, and very bad music. In other words, it is a rather accurate reflection of the mindset of the entertainment world, a system in which Madonna became an important figure. Indeed, after the filming of this movie, Madonna would be known for combining shocking sexuality, for the time, and pseudo-satanic imagery, all of which were depicted in A Certain Sacrifice. But there was clearly something about that movie that Madonna did not want people to see. Throughout the film, Madonna's character is basically a kitten slave who is assaulted and humiliated on several occasions. One might say that it was purposely written to have Madonna live out these things. Then, the movie ends with a satanic blessing, using the blood of a ritual sacrifice. In a way, Madonna was the actual sacrifice of the movie, she was dressed in red on a few occasions. Furthermore, a certain sacrifice can even be seen as her initiation into the entertainment world and its twisted ways. Today, Madonna is the grand priestess of the music industry. And this level of prestige certainly requires a certain sacrifice. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.